Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. In just a second, Dave is going to get with Kevin Cappy Carbo. He's got a lot of stuff going on. Cuban-born guy, super talented down in Florida. You'll find that out in just a second. Uh, but first off, the KRK Creator Classic is on and popping. Coming from our good friends at KRK Gibson, this is where you submit beats. You go up brackets like in basketball, since we're close to the start of the NBA season, for those who like the NBA. If you get to the end of the line, you will get whisked to Nashville, where mentors like Scott Storch and a bunch of others of that ilk are going to work with developing your beats and turn them into songs and giving you a shot at the big time. Go, don't hesitate, sign up right away. You can see the link right here below me. Go. Um, we're working on our little Aura mic. Love this thing. It is really flexible, does a lot of stuff. Take this little screw at the bottom, hook it onto a boom mic. Got it. Hook it onto a mic stand using the studio. Front and back, you can podcast with it, which is what we're doing here. Uh, as usual from AKG, innovation at a good price and incredible quality, just like their Lyra before us. Um, our boys at 1500 Sound Academy, we've got a great show coming up in a couple weeks with James and Rance. They've got an open house on October 14th. Go to 1500sound.academy and sign up and take that virtual tour. Uh, look at that open house. Some amazing things are going on there. Uh, hit us on our socials, like, subscribe, and click notify, and we will get back to you. We'll find out that information. You can see that also right here. And now to Kevin Cappy Carbo. Multi-platinum, Grammy winning. Um, Dave spent some time talking to him. Both those boys are from Florida. Um, Cappy has done stuff like Dominic Fike, uh, Justin Bieber, DaBaby, Jay Bobbin, a whole bunch of folks. And you're going to enjoy this conversation. Here's Dave and Cappy. Hey, everybody. We're here with uh, my new friend, Cappy, and uh, he's known for some amazing stuff. We're going to get to that in a moment. But first, Cappy, how has, uh, how has Naples and the surrounding area uh, influenced you? It's, it's a burgeoning, growing scene. And um, how has that part of the country influenced you? Um, we'll just... Being down here, you know, born and raised in Naples, um, you know, I, at, a, at a young age, I was just always surrounded, you know, around Latin music. You know, my dad, he was a, you know, singer songwriter and a lead vocalist of a band. And I just remember going with him as a kid all the time to rehearsals and always being surrounded by, um, you know, all the percussion instruments and um, just being constantly surrounded uh, around music and, uh, eventually it just it led me to you know once i got older it led me to get into production and recording and um i opened up a studio here in the area called the facility which is where we're at right now and uh yeah i mean i just started recording just working with so many different local artists here in the area and um it it, it just kind of helped me it's where i cut my teeth basically with engineering and and, and recording and, and producing just working with a bunch of different people here, all types of different voices and styles and genres. Um, obviously, you know, being here in Naples, we're so close to Miami. Yeah. Uh, ventured ventured off to Miami a lot to uh, to just get into like try to get into the bigger rooms out there, you know. Yeah. So um, so yeah, obviously, it's, you know, big big Latin influence. You know, did a lot of reggaeton, Latin pop, a little yeah. bit of everything, you know. But um, yeah. I'm afraid a lot of Americans have no clue about some of the the names like reggaeton and and and, yeah. uh, and uh dimbo and, and that sort of stuff they they, they don't have a clue so so we'll, we'll we'll help them with that audience you 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 might not know who who he is but he's already at a young age 24 so um uh, he's already won two grammys um your process of writing i think is is amazing because you're not forcing anything you're, you're letting things come to you uh, you're not shooting for perfection. You're shooting for energy and emotion, and just and just being yourself. And 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 uh, coming from South Florida myself, I, I hear a lot of that in you. You know, uh, and and then you're, you're blessed to have a father that was also in the industry. So take me through, uh, not not three nights, but take me to the say the Jay Balvin song that you won a Grammy for. Take me through through the through the production and the and the writing and everything of that. Yeah, um basically I uh 
I started going out to Miami to the bigger studios and um, I uh, just started to get in the room with different people, meet different people around that time. I was working with an artist. Uh, his name is Fuego. And we were doing we were working on some like uh, like a Latin trap project for him. This was before, you know, Bad Bunny, obviously, before before any of the Latin trap stuff was really ever a thing. Um, and it wasn't really accepted as much. But we were putting out a project for him. And then um, it just at that time, it caught the attention of Balvin. Uh, Balvin fell in love with the project. Next thing you know, we just see him on Snapchat and on social media, like constantly like bumping the, you know, Fuego's album and stuff. And, it, you know, from there that led uh, that led basically to Balvin uh, wanting to remix the song and, you know, put his own version out and, and put it on and feature it on the album as well. So that's kind of how I got that cut. Um, as far as the production for that song, it was just, uh, um, it was, I was working with Fuego a lot. You know, I, I had the beat and, uh, he he did we i produced several songs you know for fuego's project and it just happened to be that particular song um he ended up wanting to put it on 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 his album so it was it was cool and then from there throughout that process i met another producer friend of mine develop um and he brought me on to help co-produce uh another track with him as well on it so it was cool man it was just right place right time um and uh, ended up having two two songs on the album next thing you know comes out and uh wins the wins the latin grammy for best urban album number one 16 countries and it was it was great you know yeah it, it, there's no luck involved really uh it all started with a little walk up into the attic and found uh, a, a, a an old dusty keyboard exactly yeah. father your father's and and then you taught yourself piano and yeah uh, yeah. And yeah i mean i would have never yeah. I would have never known it, it would have led to, to to all of that, you know, but mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just just came across a little keyboard, started messing with it at a young age. And I remember I would hear I would hear uh, like just songs at the time that I that I was I was in love with the beats and stuff and the way it sounded. I would just try to figure out the melodies. A lot of it was like simple, you know, two or three key melodies. And I would just mm -hmm. try to match the melody on the keys. And then that just led to me just wanting to, uh, you know, keep playing and stuff. Eventually got into to production and making beats and all that stuff and yeah you, yeah. you got the bug and couldn't turn it loose yeah yeah and it, it's, yeah that's all i did that's all i really did most most kids were just i'm at that age you know 12 13 most kids were just out like playing sports running around i was just inside making beats all day that's, that's all i cared about so um great. pardon my ignorance but is there a difference between uh spanish trap and cuban trap um or Latin trap, let's say we're Latin trap. So I'm trying to figure that out. As far as I, I, I guess Latin trap, yeah, it's funny because I guess a lot of people they'll they'll kind of just put it all in one box. They might say you know Latin trap and reggaeton or something. It's the same thing. It's two complete different things. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess I guess Latin trap is basically, I don't know if you want to call it like Spanish hip hop because even Spanish hip hop is like, is like different, you know, like there was Spanish hip hop songs that happened way before anything that was Latin trap. Like there's Don Omar with like bandoleros, you know, but like we wouldn't classify that as like Latin trap, you know? So I don't know. I mean, it's weird. I don't even really like categorizing it, things it, like it, that. It's, you know? hard to, it's hard to remember because, because it seems like, like, like Latin trap as, as done in, in, uh, um, parts of, of the Caribbean, have have more or less dimbo music in it you know yeah yeah it seems like puerto rico has uh more dimbo in it than uh than yeah yeah for sure i mean as far as what i'm familiar with with cuba and cuba's music at least in the in the in the urban side of things i know they have like cubaton which is i guess like their version of reggaeton no no not another yeah yeah and like <laughs> I, you know it that's my people. Don't get me wrong. I, okay. I, you know, I yeah. got lots of love, but it's not my, it's not my vibe. Me too. Me too. Me too. And I don't know if you've heard it, but it's very, you know, it's, it sounds like a lot of things going on at once. And but that, that, that's how it is. You know, that, that, that represents them. And, and it's, it's, yeah. it's a country full of, full of energy. They're always, yeah. um, you know, always out dancing and stuff. And, and yeah. it, it represents that. Well, Every it's, block has their own band. It, but, yeah. Every yeah. block has their own band. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so it's almost um, like salsa and reggaeton together. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, salsa. Yeah. Um, so on on the Dominic Fike record, can you uh, let me explain to you the things that that caught my attention? Um, 
I've actually tried to duplicate some of the stuff. I, I was so fascinated by it. And and when 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 it follows another song, it clearly has more of your in in the face. It's like mm-hmm. it's like it's like really dry, or or or, or is, is perceived by the listener as dry. Yeah. And then and then the way you wove the vocals into the groove. Um, uh, I guess Dominic gets uh, Dominic Fight gets a little credit for that, but it's it's I Definitely. couldn't find a flaw with it. And 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 the unique thing that got me was there's five genres in that song. Yeah. And 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 I, I I challenge the audience to go to go listen to that and figure out the five, and and they're they're they're, they're interwoven so tightly and so wonderfully it it's just it just flows. Mm-hmm. The groove doesn't change uh, as much as some song. I mean the, the 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 beat doesn't change as much as some songs, Mm-mm. but you never know that because the the vocals are always every four bars you got something new. Every four bars you got right. something new. And, and and it's almost like you created a new genre. I know Dominic has something to do with it, but hundred um, percent. Can 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 you expand on some of those concepts for us? How how can I get how can how can I get that sound? Is it because you recorded it that way? To be honest, I mean, and it's funny because like just the way you explained it, we would have never pictured it that way. The, the moment that we were like making it, or as we're making any song, I feel like if if you approach it like. Um, you know, let's try to do a song that has six genres in it. And, you know, you're mm-hmm. never going to, you're just going to get like a, a mess of things. So I yeah. think that's where the beauty lies is just like not thinking about it, just going in, having fun. Um, Cause at the end of the day, you make a hundred songs, one or two is going to be something that's about to be, this has to be something special, you know, as mm-hmm. far as with that, um, to be honest with you, it's it, it, what everyone knows of it. It's, I mean, it, it's a, it's in demo form. It's, it technically never really got like properly finished. Um, I, I only, disagree. I think I I, don't, I like the wars. <laughs> it was it was it was abandoned, as they say, you know. But no, nah, I mean, it was within like two sessions. I mean, he, he came by. Um, I had you know I have the the studio here in, in Southwest Florida where I was at that time working with a, a bunch of different people. Mm-hmm. He came by. We were always having sessions, and it was a regular day. And uh, you know, we started from scratch. Um, just got the 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 beat going, and you know, within like 20, 30 minutes or so. I mean, I, I think he wrote it. He wrote the lyrics. He he cut like the first hook, and then he wrote parts of it over over a few days. Um, but yeah, I just I just know I think it was different than what he was used to doing. He was doing a lot of like rap stuff at the time. Um, you know, at that we weren't in in the whole world of that we are in now of like oh songwriting and pop and sessions and top lines like that wasn't like of our nature, you know. Um, I just knew I wanted to try something different and just to throw him kind of out of his out of his his zone a little bit and see and see what he did with it. Um, so I just went down that route, that alternative, like a beat kind of thing. And 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 that's what he did, you know. And I think for a while it, it wasn't really like it's not like I don't think he was the biggest fan of the song because it was just, you know, it's and my friends that hear it for the first time, it grabs them by the throat, throws them on the floor and it stomps on their neck. I mean, it's it's that powerful. Yeah, I mean, I don't get me wrong. Like after like the first session, you know, I go I'm in the car going back home playing it, and I'm like, there's definitely something special. I mean, I liked it; it, it felt good. But you know, you you make a bunch of songs, and and you always feel good about them, but then you don't think much of it after that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then and then yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff happened afterwards where eventually it came out, and then you know, it's it, all that stuff happened. You know, Tom yeah. became Tom, and you know, but yeah, I, I want to compliment you on on. Um... I don't know how to describe it because I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to say something that's negative. But I love the way Dominic felt the timing in the song and the way he, the way he, 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 his timing. Yeah, and it's 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 not flawless, <laughs> but it's perfect. You, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And, and kudos to you to leaving that. A lot of a lot of producers would that didn't have. Uh, knowledge of how, how cuban music works would would have fixed that but it's yeah. beautiful it's beautiful yeah. there's a lot of you know obviously with like salsa and just like grooves that you know latin grooves there's a lot of yeah. things tend to go kind of like it's not on the beat not on the one or on the two but they go counter they go in the pockets you know yeah. Yeah. um and and i build a lot of that into a lot of the things i do um you know groove is a really important thing for me so it's not unusual for me to like do bass notes like instead of the bass hitting on the one it's like it'll come in right after the kick just a step right after and just kind of different things like that but dom yeah dom's dom's amazing i mean you know he can he can give you uh just 
a bunch of different a bunch of different vibes you know he can he can do something that's a lot more soft and sounds more more beautiful and then he'll hit you with like you know a, a rap verse that's just lyrically insane and just all in the pocket and stuff so so yeah you know but i did we, i did spend quite a lot of time on that second verse comping comping all those those syllables and those notes just yeah, to get it, yeah. get it all in the pocket so I, I don't want this to be misinterpreted on any level but I, I I haven't really noticed you repeating that anywhere. Is it is I, it is it a one off because of the processes and where you were and and yeah and the, timing and the equipment you had and yeah I mean I think definitely after you experience you know you go through your your first song that kind of takes off and everyone kind of they they go to you for that you know what I mean that's kind of expected yeah. Um, and I just don't, I, I don't want to do the same thing over and over again. You know what I mean? I constantly want to move on to, to the next thing. So I try to not, uh, I didn't want to like, um, I didn't want to just continue giving everyone the the same sound and stuff, you know, even though a lot of people like were, were asking for that. So I might try to do something similar, you know, maybe similar tempos and stuff, but um, I don't know. I just try to always keep it moving. I think that's, that's super important, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. When I, my first, when I first moved to LA, Probably the second or third song I mixed went to number one. Wow! And um, and I kept getting that, like you're saying, hey, hey, can you, can you do me a song like, uh, like, uh, like, like this song, do a song like this, and 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 um, I had to fight that, you know. It, yeah. You don't want to be typecast or anything, and and uh, it's tough, and sometimes you have to do it. You know, you 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 have to do it because that's the it's it's what keeps people happy, and you know what I'm saying, and. And it, it'll it, it's gonna it'll pay the bills, you know. But you don't want to like milk it either, you know. So um, I think it's important as a as a producer engineer, you know, keep evolving your sound and don't don't just stay known for 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 one thing, you know. So would you say that really creative people get bored repeating themselves? Definitely, Alan is gone. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, he he's constantly he he doesn't want to do the the same thing again you know and i mean like even me like as we're working as a creative like i know you know you might do something that you know the artist you're working with or the writer you're working with will be like oh my god i love it but then to you it's like something you've already heard you've seen yourself do so many times so you're just like no i, I don't i don't want to do that you know like um not only am i trying to make something that's that's new to the audience's ears but i want to make something that's new to my ears too and like really push my limits as well you know so is uh, is the guitar in that a loop? Um, uh, it is a sample. Um, from what I remember, it was because I have just a, a library full of stuff. And on Ableton, you can you can literally just go and type in, find something. You can find type in kick, and just you'll get a thousand different kicks. Yeah. Um, so there was I remember typing in guitar, running through a bunch of guitar stuff that I had, and uh, originally it was a loop. Um, but I mess with my loops a lot. I don't. I like to manipulate them i don't yeah. i don't like just taking a loop throwing it it has to it has to be yeah. you know yeah. transformed in some way so i know it was like four or five keys up a whole nother bpm so um i slowed it down it had the progression in there i slowed it down pitched it down four or five keys and then i think the really important thing with it was uh i used lfo tool to uh threw that on there to kind of give it this oh, side okay. chain this ducking okay. effect so it's not the constant 16 strumming but then it kind of just gave it like a dun -dun, Dun, dun, yeah. dun, you know um and then with that just like building all that with like the claps and and and, and the rest of the group so uh my staff gets tired of me saying this but creativity and 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 the process is a is a journey not not yeah the journey is more important than the destination let's put it that way once once the creative person gets to the destination they 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 don't it's not fun anymore but the journey yeah. is where the, the the satisfaction of of, of your creativity uh yeah. gives you its, its its worth and and uh when i when i re read that quote from you i was like oh my god this guy's gonna be my friend for life you know <laughs> uh because because i think that way too uh, and then and then i didn't understand another thing you said you, you mentioned about connecting the dots and, and, and creatively do you remember that that, that quote Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, aside from just doing, from just being talented at, at what you do, um, you know, you have to get it out there. You have to, you know, you want to think of, uh, 
think ahead and just try to put yourself in a position to win. So um, I know I would, I would go to, I would go and pay to just be, you know, book sessions. I like expensive studios just to be there, be working. And, and just, I know that I, I, one day I was going to bump into some, some, somebody, you know what I'm saying? And then continue working, build with them. Uh, you know, when invite people over to your sessions and stuff and just think ahead, you know, and build those, those, those relationships, you know, because that's, that's really where, where everything's at. That's how you get your, your next yeah. gig. And that's, that's how you grow, you know? So, uh, this, 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 um, I think that's an eye opener for the young, younger people that are following in, in, in my and your footsteps, even. Um, yeah. one thing that I, that I've noticed is people like yourself, like, like right away, we, we talked like for, for three or four minutes and, 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 and I, and I, I liked your personality. I liked you as a human being. I liked a lot about you. And, and I, I hate to say this, but sometimes I talk to somebody for 15 minutes and I'm, I'm like, I, I don't want to talk to this person anymore and just walk <laughs> off. Yeah. And, and that ability is rarely talked about in our business, but, but like, 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 like you have a personality that draws people in, gives them confidence, and 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 your arrogance is is equal to your talent. So 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 people, I, I want to work for you. I want to I want to help you because I like the way you are. But not everybody's that way. So I think we might want to tell the audience: don't just walk in on a on a Justin Bieber session and, and expect to get to the top. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. People have to like you, and 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 exactly. Being yeah. like is a hard thing to, to, to learn. It is, it is. And, and that's one thing I had to, I had to learn because you know, when I was younger, even like in high school and stuff, I wasn't the most talkative kid. And, and even now I still catch myself just there's days where I just don't talk and I'm not, you know, if you didn't talk to me, I didn't talk to you. And that's a that's a bad, that's a bad mentality to have, especially in with what we do. You know, I realized that a lot of it is is uh is not isn't a lot of people are not even really that talented. It's just it's really just uh being a, a good people person and, and knowing how to how to understand the energy in a room and 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 keep things going, you know what I mean? And, and get the best out of the person you're, you're, you're working with. So that's a, that's a really big aspect of it. You know, Kevin, tell me if you think uh, this is true. Creative people spend more time inside themselves because they're creative and, and that's their comfort zone yeah. <laughs> to do creative things. And so sometimes we don't fully develop a personality for the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. as you age, it comes naturally. Like when you hit 14, 15, 16, you start developing that part of your personality. But yeah, but man, uh, yeah. when I was a kid, uh, you can you can you can call my sister in Atlanta and she'll tell you. Um, I didn't laugh un until I was around um, seven years old, and you could put me on the floor, and 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 go out for like five hours, and I'd be in the same exact spot. Wow. And, and, um, and so they took me to the doctor and the doctor said, well, he, he's just lazy, really. And, <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I was having fun inside my head, you You're know, like, damn, I cannot impress this kid at all. <laughs> <laughs> damn. That's funny. Um, another thing I, I have great respect for you is, is your, your sack making sacrifices and, and, and really trying to be the lightning rod for a new movement and, 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 in your part of Florida and, yeah. and you listed about uh, five or six people, a couple of which I actually heard their names because mm -hmm. I, I try to stay in touch with, with Florida because I'm from there, but yeah. Um, how are you, how's, how's your game plan coming along on that? And, and how are you funding it? And, and is it working out? It seems like it's working out. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, Southwest Florida, it's an area that's, that's growing. We, you know, we don't have, a lot of the resources that like a bigger, you know, a Miami, New York or LA might have. Um, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do here with even, even with like studio culture, you know, um, all the times I've gone to LA and, and all these bigger places, I've seen how studios operate there and just the, the etiquette over there. And I want to bring that back here. Um, you know, it's like a, a lot of times a long session for an artist here might be a few hours, like two, three hours. And it's like, yo, you know, in LA, a regular day is like, you know, an eight hour session, 10 hour session. And it's, it's every day, you know? So, um, just trying to build, build that habit and that culture over here. And, um, you know, it's growing. There's a lot of talented kids out here 
Um, and I feel like they just, they just need some guidance. They just need like, you know, the right engineers that have the experience producers to, to, to show them, to show them how to, how to, how to really do things right. You know, um, it, it's not just coming into the studio and, and recording something in a few hours and then throwing a little mix on it and call it a day. It's much more than that. It's showing them like, Hey, you know, doing, doing as many, you know, doing a lot of vocal takes and stuff, getting, getting, uh, all the right all the right parts mm -hmm. and uh and make sure you you're doing it right from the beginning you know i applaud you for that anything i can do to help that movement let me know yeah if thank you, you. if you want to skype me in to, to a meeting or something whatever i can yeah, do yeah for sure I, that'd I, be I amazing want, i want south florida and florida in general to become a place where people want to come and make great records yeah. uh we, we share a hero timbaland oh and, yeah <laughs> and um Fan. happens to be one of my friends dear friends and uh i just want to tell you that you picked a good hero because uh that guy is like no other person i've ever met in my life i mean mm -hmm. i mean he hears beats in cricket chirps he hears beats in in transmissions okay. that are going bad he, the turn signals he puts a beat to that yeah um, nice. and 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 he lives it and and we spent a little bit of time in France together with Jason Joshua, the three of us, and, and uh, I've seen them all. I don't want this to be about me, but well, yeah, kind of a little bit, but um, go for it. It's, it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but Timbaland, uh, if you're if you're starting your career out there, you'll won't you won't find a better a, a better influence than, than Timbaland and Pharrell. I mean. Uh, they, they really, 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 really are, are dedicated to music. And, and, yeah. and I don't know what else to say. They, they're just, they're just better than me. And <laughs> I wish I could reach that plateau, you know, they, they're, they're not only great creative people, but they're, they're really good people and help people. And yeah, no, T Timberland definitely, he set the bar like really high and not only set the bar high, but he just like, he, he just broke it in half, twisted it. I mean, he, he, you know, the things he was doing with his grooves and drums and, and sounds and the way he samples things. I mean, it's, it, it's crazy. So I, I, I definitely know what you mean. And I, I get, I've gotten a lot of my inspiration from that. You know, it's me too. Growing, me too. growing up. I, I, it's funny because people ask me who your favorite artist you listen to. And like, I don't ever really know like artists to say, I, I've always followed producers more, you know, and like who they produce for in certain records they've done. So, mm. um, yeah i mean the the stuff he's done you know all the foundation he he's laid it's 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 crazy you know and i i almost wish like i i want to keep building all that too on just doing more more intricate grooves and and, and making that more more normal you know what i mean more, yeah. more common if, if, um so let, you ready for batter's box you want to try that let's try it let's go for it okay just one word and and, and my, my favorite answer is babe you idiot Who, why would you ask that that's my favorite reply but luckily, you got to keep it just to one or two, three, four words. Eight oh eights. Max bass. Ooh. Distortion. Lo-fi. Point one. He's just showing off now. <laughs> Virtual synthesizers. Omnisphere. Arroz con pollo or ropa vieja? Arroz con pollo. All day. <laughs> Come on. You knew the answer to that. <laughs> you knew the answer, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> That's the correct answer, by the yeah. way. Uh, major or minor key? Minor. Sad boy. Favorite <laughs> outboard gear? Um, <clears throat> two tech. CL1B. Wow. Yep, I'm with that. Bass. Helio 69. You're showing off, man. Come on now. Uh, yeah. Loops. <laughs> Transform. Favorite microphone? 251. Expensive. Yeah. Favorite mic preamp? Bay. 1073. What What was the least expensive equipment you've used on, on a, a record that we would know? Um, probably, I'd have to say toy piano 30 dollar toy piano wow yeah was that on a, a jay balvin song no i i don't think it's on any anything that's out but i've i've fiddled with it on a lot of different projects and stuff and uh you get a cool i mean sample it with an iphone and you get like 
cool textures out of, out of that, especially just recording off an iPhone and not like, you know, kind of yeah. like very like lo-fi and like dirty sounding and stuff. So, so, so where do you see yourself heading? Where what's the future hope for you? Right now, really, um, you know, still trying to trying to juggle the the balance of running and operating a, a, a professional recording studio, you know, here in Southwest Florida, and then still continuing with the production and, and the and the engineering. Um, I mean, really, what I would like to see is for you know the facility to grow into a, um, a three or four room facility, uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, with the whole staff of engineers and interns and everything. You know, we're 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 working towards that. Um, and hopefully, you know, top of next year, we'll be able to start, start the build out and, and get it going. Um, but really just create like, uh, you know, a big, there's already a sense of community, which is continuing to grow that community here, here mm -hmm. in the area. Mm -hmm. Um, and just provide like a hub and, and a Mecca for, for, you know, the aspiring songwriter artist that wants to go somewhere that they're going to get the right guidance. You know what I mean? Um, and you know, get the right, the right information, the right knowledge, um, yeah. And then just everything, everything I've done in life has been very, I don't, I'm not a person who forces things. I don't, um, I just kind of let things naturally happen. I try to put myself in certain positions and, and, and just, just see what happens, you know? So yeah, it's in your favor. That's all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely, you know, juggling like producer and engineer is, is kind of, it's kind of tough. There's usually either like, you're either like a, a mix engineer or you're a producer and you're, you're, you're killing one aspect or the other. Um, so I'm trying to kind of just like kill both, you know, try to get the catalog nice, looking nice on the producer side, but also with, with mixing as well. You know, that's something I'm very passionate about too. So, so yeah. Well, El Capitan, <laughs> happy <laughs> for short. Man, you killed it. And uh, uh, stay in touch with us. You know, uh, if we come down there, you'd, you'd be a wonderful panelist and, uh, like I said, yeah, sure. anything I can do to help the cause, I'm there. Um, well, I can't say I'm there, but uh, I might <laughs> say no, but I'll, I'll try yeah. my best. Uh, I've got to come it. down to Florida soon, um, and uh, so so I'll, I'll look you up. But my friend, um, you're the poster child for how to do things right, and, and this is normally the part of the interview where, where I, I, uh, I, I, I take us home. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I think I think you've laid out a roadmap today for success. That if anybody copies it, they'll they'll, they'll get good results from it too. And you're you're going on to another level. I, I can tell Thank you're you. on, already on another plateau. Thank you again. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>